Hello, my name is Joe Stander. This is Module 5, Barriers to the Web 2.0. This is for AEP 800. Uh, first off, I want to talk to you about some of the articles that I had an opportunity to read, uh, Barriers to Using the Web 2.0 in the 21st Century Schools. Uh, some barriers that we face, time, training, technology support, administrative report, support, school culture, and the digital divide. Um, Time-wise, uh, a lot of times during uh, the school year, teachers kind of complain they don't have the time to really go through the different uh, tech tools that they are able to use in the school year. Uh, we need to be able to make that time. I think it's very important. Training. Uh, some teachers, a lot of teachers really, like a lot of the older ones, uh, don't have the appropriate training to use the new technology within the schools. They, we must make time uh, to help those teachers out to better understand how to use those in the school. Uh, technology support. Uh, we got to have the support for it, guys. Uh, it is important that um, we have the backing of school boards, uh, administration. As administrator, I'm 100% on board with technology. So um, it is always important that we get the support of those in the community as well. Administrative report. As an administrator, it is important that we support our 21st century technology tools because without them, our students will not be prepared for life outside of school. School culture. Some school cultures, I, I never want to think about, you know, sticking with the status quo where we never used it before. We, we need to move on beyond that. We, need to, we have to implement technology. There's no way around it. It is so important to the, in today's life. The digital divide, this can be trickier because uh, whether it's with teacher training, with resources, with networks for students who have to go home without one, um, it can be really difficult uh, to get past that digital divide. Um, so uh, next article I read was seven common barriers that obstruct tech adoption in education. Uh, one was having lack or uh, a lack or no vision. Uh, we must have a, a vision uh, to be successful with technology. If we do not have a vision with technology, then we are bound to fail. That's just it. Uh, we have to have a clear vision. Uh, changing what a, a teacher's role is. As a teacher, we um, I expect teachers to be guiders, not dictators. Um, the role of teacher is ever changing and is more present now than it is ever. Uh, we have to allow our students the time to be explorers and to uh, be able to problem solve on their own. We cannot just dictate rules and expectations at them every time. Uh, considering the achievement gap, we always must think about, you know, our students that struggle the most due to economic or geographical uh, problems. Um, it is, we have to be able to come together to help those students so education is more equitable for them. Uh, figuring out how to scale promising innovations, uh, presenting new uh, findings is always important. New technology. Um, we have to try to stay ahead of the curve. That's just it. If we don't, we get left behind. Uh, lacking money to invest in technology. This can be an issue in some situations, yes. We have to be able to find the money to help support students. There should be, that. that's an excuse I wish we didn't have. And there are grants and everything that we can get to help us with that barrier. Uh, we just have to find it. Thinking beyond textbooks, we gotta think beyond textbooks anymore. Textbooks are great for a while, but our students aren't gonna have a textbook with them every single time. They need to be able to use what they are learning in everyday situations. We have to get beyond just textbooks. Uh, using project-based learning is uh, really a new and important method that I think students should be able to use more. Having a strong infrastructure in place, uh, tech-wise and human-wise. Tech-wise, you know, we have to have a strong network. We have to have the technology there uh, to help our students. If we don't have the network there or if we have a weak network, then our students aren't learning. Our students aren't participating. Uh, human as well. We have to have the human element there to make sure that our standards are high and our students are, uh, are adhering to those standards. There's no way around it. Uh, next article I read was the Digital Divide. Uh, this was a really surprising article. Uh, it talked about how poverty and geography uh, play a major role in how the Digital Divide keeps um, growing. Uh, because, you know, half of homes making 20000 or less are not connected. Uh, I thought that was really surprising. Um, we have to do something about that. We, we, there needs to be a bare minimum. I know it talked about how if we did do it like utilities, uh, then everybody is 
with the bare minimum, then there wouldn't be any innovation or anything. I think if we set the bare minimum and then, you know, when innovations occur, then, you know, we can add that in. But we can't just say we can't do it. I, that, that's a load right there. Okay, geography, I know geography can be kind of a tricky situation, but with advancing of how we run lines and everything, I think we should be able to help kids out that struggle with geography as well. Um, smartphones do work, but you do run out of data, and that kind of gets tricky once in a while uh, with spotty networks. A lifeline program, I did talk about that, how it helps assist uh, families that can't afford broadband, but it uses money from uh, telephones. And landlines and stuff, and no one really uses those anymore, come on. <clears throat> okay, uh, the next article I read was on open educational resources, usually used as a unit whole filler. We need to get beyond that. We need to use it more open uh, to create an open curriculum for students to learn and discover. Um, there's databases out there that are full of open resources. We use Go Follow It here at the high school in Winfield, and it's a great resource to use. Um, I use it for a few of my units where kids are able to explore, look at different articles, make, uh, you know, look at uh, different relationships between historical accuracies and what's going on in the novella. Uh, less reliance on textbook, like I talked to you before, we need to get away from that more, going more towards problem-based or situational-based learning. And I think uh, using these open resources to have students explore on their own and have us, you know, kind of pick out the data that they could use is very beneficial. Um, there are some questions, does it meet state standards? That can be an issue, yes. And does the quality suffer? It can as well. That's why we have to make sure, you know, our departments go through the material to make sure that it is appropriate and it meets standards. And it is of the top quality for each and every one of our students. Because we all want what's best for our students. Uh, different hubs for resources, I mentioned GoFollow, you know, uh, there's other ones as well. Um, it's always wise, you know, just go out there, explore, uh, and see what's out there so you can share that with others. Uh, another thing I went over um, watching the YouTube video, the ICT adoption barriers. Um, <clears throat> it talked mainly about how uh, it's easier to implement in a uh, secondary school, I mean a primary school than it is a secondary school. Uh, it talked about how, as educators, they cannot be too scared to try new things. They need to build a culture of trust and working in smaller groups. And the primary is perfect for it because they're able to work with kids on a daily basis every day. In high school, not as much. Uh, we only get a limited amount of time. I know in block scheduling, we get about you know an hour and a half with them. We're not able to go over a lot of the applications with them. We're not able to repeat a lot of the expectations with them. So one-to-one -one progress does slow down more into the secondary unit than it does in the primary. Uh, because we can't work with, when you're in the secondary, you just can't work with them more consistently. You just, especially in block schedule, it's every other day. Uh, so how the digital divide can be resolved? I think it can be resolved through training, funding, and expectations. We need to be able to train our teachers and our staff how to use uh, technology properly and how uh, students can use it as well. Uh, if we do that, then we can get a lot of those older teachers, a lot of those teachers that are inexperienced, uh, experienced, so they can feel comfortable with technology funding. We gotta make sure we can get technology that is appropriate for students. Free technology is always great. Free tools are always great. I'll never say anything bad about those, uh, but sometimes you just have to fork over the money so you can stay ahead of the curve, whether that's with uh, hardware like with Chromebooks or if just actual web tools. Expectations. We have to have high expectations with, with what we use with our uh, technology. Students need to be able, we need to be able to set high standards of what we expect with our technology. When our standards are low, our outcomes are low, and we lose support, and our students will not be prepared for the 21st century. Uh, skills needed for 21st students uh, before graduation, they need to know how to communi communicate appropriately through email, through chat. Uh, they need to learn they can't just spout off whatever they want. And you know that whatever they say can and will come back to bite them on the butt. Uh, they need to be able to navigate through sources, know what's appropriate, what's not, what's not appropriate. Uh, they need to be able to problem solve. Uh, once they leave here, they got to know that they're not just going to get the answer all the time. They need to know basic applications from Word doc to spreadsheets. Uh, they need to be open to learning new technology. They can't stay stuck in the mud the entire time and go with what they've learned so far. 
They need to go out there and experience new things. And they also need to learn financial responsibility. That's always a key. You know, how to balance a checkbook, how to save money, how to do taxes. You know, that, that, those are the important skills that every student should learn. Uh, the global economy and the effect uh, use of my internet, uh, shopping habits, shopping at, you know, Amazon, Macy's, okay, uh, education wise, you know, uh, going to Fort Hayes State, uh, <clears throat> looking up uh, different materials for, uh, to progress my knowledge within my content as well. Uh, entertainment, you know, Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, okay, I'm pretty much a cable cutter. Uh, information, Okay, reading articles, news articles, watching TED Talks, uh, just to gain information, it's mainly how I use it. And, you know, it's kind of cut away a lot of the physical print and going to the stores and going to a campus to go to school. It, it's really cut that off. All right, training needs to integrate. The training that I need more in, I feel, is with uh, project-based learning, effective tech plan and curriculum using open resource. Uh, project based learning, I used to use it when I was in middle school, but I, I need to be able to implement it more within the secondary and using it with like humanities, like with English and trying to, you know, get into other areas as well. It could be kind of hard in secondary. Effective tech plan, I need to know how, you know, the best ways to get one started within a school. Uh, going, uh, you know, come part of a community to discuss would be important. Uh, curriculum, as of right now, using those open resources, I only use it for a few units. I would love to use it uh, a little bit more later on, uh, but I need to have that extra training to feel comfortable with going full open resource. Uh, my school, we are equipped with Chromebooks, projectors, smart boards, Google Suites, various reading programs, go follow it. Uh, Chromebooks, we are one-to-one, -one, so that is beneficial. We are ahead of the game on that one. Projectors, projectors are pretty good. We stay on top of those. Uh, we use those more and more. Really, every classroom is, is equipped with one. Smart boards, not every classroom has a smart board. I currently do not. I, we've experimented with some because ours are getting pretty outdated. The programs are not working anymore, so we are in the process of looking for others right now. Use, use of Google Suites, Gmail, Google Docs, Slides, Sheets. Uh, they work pretty well in and out of the class and classroom. Uh, various reading programs, uh, we use Reading Academy, uh, we use FastBridge uh, to collect data. <clears throat> Using GoFollet for open resources is a great use as well. Advantages to innovative practices, uh, prepare students for the future. It keeps students engaged and it helps with an ever-changing economy. Uh, if students aren't prepared for the future, then we are not doing our jobs and we have to be innovative and stay ahead of the curve so students are prepared for life after school and keeping them engaged. You know, so many different things are going on and students don't know where to focus. We have to be able to find something new that they just go right to and they are engaged and they are learning. Uh, helping with an ever-changing economy, getting, be, having students prepared for what's coming down the road and being ready for uh, that time. That is our job as educators, and that's my job as an administrator to make sure that we are doing that. But there are some issues that do arrive with trying to be innovative. You know, we can overshoot what will be innovative. Sometimes we might go for something that won't be. You know, think about Google Glass. You know, Google Glass, you know, is not that innovative anymore. It's only used in a small market in uh, the economy. Uh, Buy-in can be kind of a... a disadvantage as well. Sometimes it could be uh, so innovative that teachers just cannot buy in or students can't or even forgetting the standards. You know, we have to be able to hit our state standards as well. That is important. Uh, Cyberbullying, inappropriate internet use with students. Uh, I have noticed a few of these. Uh, I've had students that have harassed other students and myself using uh, Hangouts, Gmail, uh, through texting. Um, you know, it's one of those things where we have to sit down with a student and discuss appropriate behaviors and teach digital citizenship. Uh, students looking at inappropriate content on the Chromebooks, uh, that's kind of a give me thing. You get, oh, you always get a few of them that are like that. Uh, you just got to catch them, be vigilant. We use GoGuardian here at the high school and it's very beneficial. Students making threat through different mediums that goes back to, you know, the email, you know, I've gotten it. I've seen some other, um, uh, students as well that have gotten some threatening emails. It's just reporting it and staying vigilant and teaching those skills. 
Okay, always thought cyberbullying. So thank you for watching and uh, have a great day.